My enemies are many. My equals are none. And welcome everyone, Laha here with part one of my new France Let's Play, the Italian campaign for Napoleon Total War with Darth Mod. So at last, it's time to begin our Rise of Napoleon series. We'll be playing through each of the three campaigns of Napoleon in order. Starting with the Italian campaign, then the Egyptian campaign, and then finally the main grand campaign, the European campaign. Now each of these three campaigns will have their own dedicated playlist and slight variation of the thumbnail to help them stand out for you guys to easily find and follow along with. The Italian and Egyptian campaigns are much shorter, smaller focus campaigns, more zoomed in areas of the map. They're more objective focused and they are quite time sensitive. Uh, so they should be fairly quick to go through from what I've seen of other people's Let's Plays and series for both Italy and Egypt. Probably between five to 10 episodes of about 40 to 60 minutes each. That should just about do it. So hopefully by the end of the month, we should be starting the main European campaign, which we're all familiar with. But I think it'll be fun to play through those first two campaigns of Italy and Egypt, as not only do we get to see the rise of Napoleon, his early military career, it'll also give me a chance to uh, kind of refresh my knowledge of Napoleon Total War and Darth Mod, which is the only mod that I'm using for this series. You can find it linked in the description. No extra sub mods or anything like that, because it has been quite a while since I last played Napoleon, a good couple of years. So as always, your advice, tips and tactics are greatly appreciated. I'll be releasing this series at minimum every Monday, Wednesday and Friday going forward. But I'm hoping to kick things off with probably four to five uploads a week initially. And then we'll kind of see how this series fits in with all my other content. Because I will also be looking to start a Shogun 2 Takeda campaign probably in two to three weeks time. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But without further ado, let's begin and dive on in to the Italian campaign. So we have our campaign difficulty set to hard, battle difficulty set to very hard. The reason why we're not playing on very hard, very hard is that Darth Mod is best balanced for hard campaign, very hard battle difficulty. So I don't want to disrupt anything with the mod. That's what I've done all my Darth Mod campaigns on. And they've proven quite a challenge at times if you've not checked them out. Um, so here we go. Italy, the new revolutionary Republic of France is under threat from all the old reactionary nations of Europe. It is clear that there are no options other than war and that the utter uh, ruination of France is the only aim of Austria and France's other enemies. The Austrians are motivated by fear. They fear their own people will follow the same revolutionary path. The Austrians can be confronted in Germany and northern Italy. Austria's positions in Italy are ready for liberation. The other states of Italy bear watching, uh, but should not be able to stand against the righteous anger of the French people. General Napoleon de Bonaparte, in charge of the Army of Italy's artillery, has been appointed to command the entire army. It is his duty to hold onto France's territory in the Italian peninsula. This is, however, an ambitious and skillful man, and he has plans to drive the Austrians out of Italy and back to the gates of Vienna. Let the rise of Napoleon begin. Some men live a simple life, while others have a fire that threatens to engulf the world. I do not know when the fire in Napoleon first burned. Perhaps he had always had a destiny, but sometimes Destiny can use a little help, or even a revolution. The old ways were drowned in a tide of blood. A man could be whatever he wanted, if he could weather the storm. In 1796, Napoleon was sent to command the army of Italy. We knew that Austria would fight in Germany. We knew the Italian campaign had become pointless. Napoleon thought differently. That was his talent. I will lead you through the most fertile plains in the world. You will find there honor, glory, and riches, he told us. The soldiers listened, but they didn't believe. They had long been without hope, without glory. 
It is a crucial time in the war between France and the coalition. With the majority of French forces engaging Austria in the Rhineland, you've been placed in command of the destitute Armée d'Italie near the French-Italian border. Faced with impending invasion from Austrian forces stationed in Italy, it is vital that you address your army's dire situation and secure a foothold in the region before setting your sights on Austria itself. Capture Klagenfurt and your forces will have a clear path to Vienna. The stronghold of Mantua may prove to be a challenging obstacle, although its seizure is vital if you hope to weaken the Austrian position in Italy. You will also face resistance from Austria's coalition ally, the Kingdom of Piedmont, Sardinia. Subjugating this nation, along with any other Italian states that stand in your way, will ensure you sufficient resources to crush the Austrians and overthrow the coalition once and for all. Thank you, Advisor Leia. Now, some of you probably wondering, why is Princess Leia your advisor? Uh, Darth Mod uh, is made by a, a modder called Darth Vader, who's actually gone on to set up his own game studio. He now uh, develops the Ultimate General series. In fact, I really want to check out their uh, their newest title that I think released into Early Access a couple of weeks ago, uh, Ultimate General American Civil War. It looks really good. Uh, but yeah, Darth Vader is all about Star Wars, so that, that's why you've got Princess Leia in there giving us uh, advice. So, mission issued. We need to take uh, and capture the city of Klagenfurt. Clear a path to Vienna. So that's up over here. That's where we need to go. And now we are pretty kind of time sensitive on that mission. We've got to complete our objectives by late December 1797. I'm pretty sure it's is it one turn is two weeks in this campaign. Uh, maybe it's longer than that in the Italian and Egyptian campaigns. I don't actually know. If anyone knows, feel free to let me know. Caption holds six regions, including the regions shown. Uh, complete by the end of your turn, late December 1797. Total victory regions held one of six. We've only actually got two of those victory regions, or we just need to hold six regions in total, plus those two listed. Okay, that is fine. Um, obviously, yeah, advice, tips, and tactics greatly appreciated. Um, kind of like, I guess, like no spoilers, because I know these are there's some there's some interesting events that can occur throughout this campaign, and I assume the Egyptian one as well, from what I remember. Uh, of them i do know that we should probably look to push to take turin as soon as possible because that should allow us to subjugate the kingdom of sardinia and that way we won't get bogged down we'll have a bit of a buffer uh, against uh, the austrian empire although i don't actually know if we i actually i say a buffer we i think we just grab all their land i don't think they actually become a uh, kind of a vassal uh, or protectorate kingdom for us but still it'll give us additional territory which will help us push back the austrians and then we can push on through take mantua which as uh Princess Leia suggested there is pretty uh, well fortified. So taking that will help uh, cripple, hopefully, the Austrian war. I don't know if there's other kingdoms that we can end up subjugating by taking certain settlements. If anyone knows that, feel free to let me know because that would be potentially useful. Let's have a quick look at diplomacy. Yeah, pretty much everybody hates me or they're indifferent or unfriendly. So we're not going to get any trade here. What is our... Opening funds looking like 991 income next turn and we're at war with Austria and Sardinia. Okay, I'm not going to worry about going after Sardinian territory to the east. We've got Napoleon here. Now be recruited directly by a general. Lovely. Uh, we're on two times unit size in the Darth Mod settings as well. So we've got some pretty large forces and armies. So we'll have our opening battle there. Thanks, Lair, for all the advice. And we'll move on uh, Connie there as well. Might need Napoleon to help us out. We've got artillery, so hopefully we'll be okay. Um, what have we got? Revolutionary infantry, National Guard, yeah, militia, aka cannon fodder. But yeah, we'll push in there, then bring Napoleon round, gather them all up, get some additional troops, and then march on Turin. That's going to be kind of my opening moves. Don't know if that's going to be what's in this episode. We'll play for about an hour today in total, so we'll see how we do. Silence layer. Um, right, what do we want to get? We can get the tax office there. In fact, I'm what i potentially consider doing is actually converting that straight away to a cannon foundry so we can get some more artillery can we get more no we can't get any more right now more artillery is always good and i feel like that that's what napoleon would do right more artillery although we also we do need the additional um 
the additional tax rate. I mean, what's that one got? That's got uh, there, so we could always switch that. Yeah, I know. I'm going to spread it out. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to get at. Upgrading roads as well. Yeah, cobbled roads. What have we got over here? A uh, merchant house. Okay, region world. Yeah, so it probably is best to leave that one there. Okay, we'll just upgrade this to a barrack so we get some fuselers of the line. Accuracy reload skills a little bit higher than the revolutionary infantry. And obviously the militia guard. Uh, or the militia guard, the national guard, which are just militia. There's regular militia. Chasseurs are light infantry. And we've got chasseurs cheval. Missile cavalry. Okay, right. Well, let's... Uh, Let's get some additional troops. What are we what are we lacking? Probably some more cavalry there. We've got artillery, got some dragoons with Napoleon. There we go. Um he's got fuses of the line here. We've got oh, a unit of grenadiers. They're gonna be pretty tough. I don't think there's actually grenades in I think Dalton just got rid of the grenades. Um in both I think both Empire and Napoleon. But um they're pretty hardy chaps. They're pretty good in melee from what I can see. The stats 15, good on the charge. How does that compare to line infantry? Yeah, it's their charge. So you want to get them charging on in. And we've got six pounder foot artillery. Nice, nice, nice. Also, I should say probably in the Italian and then the next campaign that we do, the Egyptian campaign, I'm not going to ask for unit name suggestions, although maybe we'll just name the units in Napoleon's army, actually. Um, but yeah, broadly, we won't take unit names for all the, all the troops. We'll wait, we'll save that for the, um, for part one of the main grand campaign, the European campaign. So yeah, in fact, for this campaign, the Italian campaign and the Egyptian campaign, we will take unit name suggestions, but just for Napoleon's army only. Once we then get to the main European campaign, we'll take unit name suggestions for all of our troops all of our armies so yeah in the comment section of this video and this video alone for this italian campaign you name suggestions please for napoleon's army uh we'll add them in over the next couple of episodes or once napoleon gets to a full 20 stack if you can um specify the specific unit that you want your name for like fuselers of the line uh that'd be great if not please do at least say whether you want it for line infantry light infantry cavalry or cannons or artillery uh, that would be of great help but yeah keep them all on this episode nice and easy to find we'll send napoleon in to fight those austrians over there in a moment but yeah looking at them with some more cavalry wouldn't go amiss and probably some more infantry and we could send these guys up here and then have him bring up some more artillery if we move up the infantry though that army won't be able to move in and start sieging but then i don't know if they actually will be able to because the militia um and then they've got they've got those guys in as an army and then additional reserve garrisons that's that's actually pretty strong but i don't want to wait really if i can avoid it um let's go for two units fuselers align and then chasseurs can't afford the cobbled roads now which would help us get moving fast and i'd like to get that upgraded as well but right now we can't we just need to take territory as rapidly as we can um I mean, yeah, we probably should send these guys up. There's, there's a good number. National Guard of 500 men. Okay, they're not they're not powerful, but hopefully soak up some damage. We can always bring Napoleon on over to reinforce. I guess we could start sieging if they sally on out. Could always retreat. But let's kick things off with Napoleon's first battle here. In you go. A very large army or navy spread over two or more. Silence. Uh, 1,076 versus 2,164. So we definitely outnumber them. They do have artillery. They've got dragoons as well. Some German fusiliers. How do they compare to mine? Mine are 30 accuracy. Uh, range of 110. I can't see the reload here, but 14 attack, 10 defense. Okay, higher high defense. I think they have less morale there. Something, yeah, the, the French... I think also the British troops excel at in this game. They have really decent morale, so they're less likely to break. Okay. In we go. And uh, feel free to comment below as well your favorite Napoleon fact. Um, thanks, Darth. That's good. But yeah, feel free to share your favorite Napoleonic fact or, you know, bit of bit of tidbit of history from this period. I don't know a huge amount um about this period to be honest uh, other than what i've kind of seen in pretty much like tv shows and uh, i will say this now and i'm probably going to keep saying it throughout the whole thing uh i'm gonna have to re-watch 
uh, Sharp again, which is the uh, TV series they did from the Bernard Cornwall series of uh, of novels. Absolutely fantastic, starring a, a young Sean Bean. Get some artillery here. Can we hit them from here? Where's the, the range is huge in Darth Mod for the artillery. That's good, yeah. Blast that to start with. We want to be careful about our infantry. I'm thinking we probably need to... Do we want to advance up or draw them to us? We don't have the best deployment here. It's all slightly downhill. Yeah, I'm thinking Dragoons up here. Because they can also shield themselves from artillery fire going around the cliffs that way. Also, I'm sure some of you will be asking, have I seen the Napoleon film? What did I think of it? Uh, yes, I have seen it. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be a um, particularly accurate film or anything like that. Uh, you know, it, it's Ridley Scott. He does make um, cool hi historical sort of epics that are maybe based on history, but then devolve into their own thing. So I wasn't expecting it to be particularly historically accurate or, or anything like that. Um, I would have liked to have seen more battle scenes, to be honest. Um, obviously there were a fair amount of inaccuracies with the battle scenes that that were that were present, but I enjoyed them. They were they were cool, you know, epic battle sequences. I just wanted more of them, to be honest. Um, it was obviously a lot of focus on the relationship between Napoleon and uh, Josephine, but um, yeah, more more battles would have been would have been cool. More battle sequences. Uh, Mr. Scott, please. Uh, hopefully there'll be like a director's cut. I mean, I doubt we'll see brand new battles, but maybe we'll see some additional scenes and sequences for the battles that were that were shown. But yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go watch some Sharp. Get my uh, fix of Napoleonic action yet. Yeah. Blast their cannons. I am going to... Yeah, I'm going to advance forward my infantry. We're clear of the cannons. Yeah, advance here. Cavalry, up you go. They go straight for these guys, which means we're going to need to form square, I'd have thought. They're firing their cannons right into the thick of my troops. Pull these guys back. So they can form square. That's it. Form square and fire. Bring down those dragoons. You guys I'm going to have going over here to harass that general. And then hopefully the artillery, although we've already knocked down their artillery to two cannons. Yeah, stop firing. You're going to shoot your own guys. More infantry over there. Hold that square line. And then what I was hoping to do is turn the cannons to fire on these guys, but send the fuselage of the line to deal with the land here. Advance. There we go. Cavalry is broken. How are we doing against the general? Yeah, chase him down. Right, their artillery is gone. Thanks, boss. Yeah, I'll be firing by rank. Which I love as, like, that animation sequence is great. Move you guys round. Fire over here. Cavalry's come back, hasn't it? Form square. Our 
general is under attack. Yeah, he'll be all right. Ooh, what happened to you guys? Out of square. Napoleon, go over here and rally these guys. I'm trying to bring up my cannon so I can hit them with uh, canister shot. Okay, you know what? Charge in. Give him a volley. Why are you guys refusing to chase that general down? Take him out. There we go. Goes up from behind him. How are we doing? Charging me there. Yeah, I was really hoping to blast you with uh, cannon. Yeah, we're finally dealing with that general, which is good. Increased unit size is nice, but might make things get a little bit wonky. I definitely don't want to unlimber these cannons and start firing grape shot, canister shot into them. That's stuck in. How are we doing against their general? Yeah, he's nearly down. Come on, run up the hill, chaps. Opening fight. Scrappy. Definitely don't want to get into close quarters if we can help it. There we go, they're broken. Chase him down. Once we finally got the Dragoons chasing them. There we go. Um, we'll continue a little bit. Because I feel like these guys want their revenge. Napoleon charging in. Take him out. Every little helps. I think you're well away, General. It's all good. Nice. Could probably fire a shot, can't they? Yeah, look at that. Didn't get a chance to really kind of watch them set up and fire. Try to do that better next battle. battle statistics are yes, thank you. We lost 738. Damn. But, I mean, we should, probably shouldn't be too surprised considering we got the revolutionary troops and the militia in there. They lost 967. Honorable. There we go. Mission issued. Structure supply post. Grants a unit of Grendis of the line. Experience of all land units. Okay. Supply post.
That'll be one of these, won't it? Yes. Okay, we'll do that here then. Occupying a port with an army um, yeah, we can get additional troops there. But I should probably just march on in. I think, yeah, we're going to go for it. How's that look? They might sally out with the militia. We've got the artillery though. We could probably try and gun them down a bit. And weaken them. And we'll just continue the siege. Let's bring Napoleon in because then the two of them supporting each other should be fine. And yeah, I'm going to give you additional troops. Assuming you can't bring them all up on your own. What if you, if you pop out? Are they happy? Public order? Yep. We'll leave him behind though to build up additional troops. And we'll move you guys up. Let's go for it. Right, there's no tech, uh, tech to research in this campaign. Right, end the turn. See what happens. They are going to sally on out. Um, I'm defending it so, so I, can, I can decline the attack. What? And I'll just be. I guess I'll just be pushed off. They outnumber me two to one. This could be a good opportunity to thin them down with cannon and then retreat. Potentially thinking. Shred them a bit. Use my cavalry to try and take out their artillery. This could also be very bad for us if it, if it goes horribly, horribly wrong, which it, it could well do. It's just weak militia, though. If we shred them with the artillery, I think we can maybe get the upper hand. I'm, I'm going to give this a go. I may re instantly regret this, but I'm going to give it a go. They're attacking me, so they'll have to come to my position. I'm hoping they dribble on in. I can take up some good defensive ground. I'm thinking, like, uh, potentially here. Uh, we could try and push forward and catch them in the streets and blast them. To look around, because these maps are pretty big. What's that wall we could utilize, popping troops alongside, but it's downhill there. Mm, I mean, coming through the city, that'll bunch them up a little bit. So I reckon we try and push forward round about hold here and then shred them as they're coming in and have our flank secured there. So yeah, let's get forward quickly. We do need to try and see if we can utilize their artillery because always that's going to be a bit, bit of a pain to deal with. They've got dragoons over there, so I'd rather them get caught up by the infantry. So I'm going to deploy my cavalry on the other side to go around and harass and fire. Yeah, and you guys are light infantry spacing, which... Yeah, I think I think it's I always used to put them in front of troops to kind of screen, but then I think your own troops fire through them and they they tend to do damage that way. So I think I'm just going to have you guys on a flank rather than in front of my own troops. Yeah, pop you to this side. Spread out as long as you can to get all of your ranks firing as much as possible. My general here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it looks good to me. So yeah, cannon goes to here. Light troops there. Ah, oh, the cannon is over on that side. That's a little bit annoying because I'd like to try and take that out with my own, my own cavalry. Because I want my cannon focusing on bringing the enemy troops down. Well, we could loop around here and harass this side, I guess. Or we'll go all the way around and knock out their artillery. That's what we should try and do. But we need the dragoons gone. So we'll pull you guys all the way around here. Big flanking maneuver. 
They're winded currently. Running them, but I, I, I've got to do it. Hoping shots here won't be able to do too much. I mean, imagine if I could secure that, that ridge there. That would be diabolical. Right. I'm limber. Are we pulling troops back? I mean, if we end up pulling some of them back, that's not terrible. Yeah, they're tired. Have them walk there a little bit. Hoping that they take so long to get their artillery in position. By the time they do, they don't have clear line of sight, which they don't right now. Where's my artillery firing? General staff. Yeah, try and get the shot through there. Prepare to fire. Oh, that's a bouncing shot and a half. Bring the general down. That will affect their morale. Their cavalry's definitely moved up now, so I've got to move my own up at speed. Canister. Oh, shred them. Beautiful. That's what we want. They're gone. And we've got their cavalry coming in over here. Shredded. Turn for the cavalry over there. Then we can hit these guys as they march on up. Cavalry. Charge the cannons. Fire the shot. I'm trying to draw that cavalry in, but I think they pull back to try and protect their cannons. And I don't really want to re risk my cavalry too much, so we're going to go for a strike here. Knock them off. Break them. Go. Focus on these guys coming up here. Like their cavalry is foolishly chasing mine. Which I will move up to the high ground here. We're tired though and we're getting caught. Get them. Yeah, they're all coming up here. So if we can switch to canister shot... is going to be diabolical and that's a far range this is what I was hoping they do yet yeah, marching column at me perfect for canister this will allow me to thin the numbers down Did they chase me with any cavalry it doesn't look like it so we'll pull you guys up over here I know you're tired but we need to get you back into the action Answer with you guys, you're gonna to have to go square to defend. Oh, we shredded two units in one go. Prepare to fire, National Guard. For the glory of France. Sir, sir, our general is under attack. Beautiful. Squares are formed. Should shred the dragoons and stop them getting to the cannon. Keep firing. Because they're still closing the distance. Be 
Keep those dragoons gone. Dragoons drag on is what we need. Move into flanking positions on you guys. Turn the cannons to face the militia. Holy! That smoke. Probably charge that militia. Solid charge. A hundred or so casualties, and they've broken. Chase the rest of them down. Yeah, this is great. Thing is, I don't know if we'll get a win if we'll get the settlement. I doubt because they're sallying out, so we need to kill as many of them as possible. So we need to advance, especially in case they rally. Never underestimate the power of cannon. Continue. You'll say, how can it in battle and they come back? <laughs> Chase them down. Very satisfying. Give them a volley. That's got to be one of the scariest parts of like Napoleonic warfare. If you if you had both like the unit you're in and the enemy unit you're firing at, you could both see they just fired off rounds. Yours both, you know, you're still standing, but now you've got to hurriedly reload your rifle or your musket to um, to shoot again before you you can kind of see them reloading to do the shots, you know, take the next shots against you that could well end up hitting you and killing you. Must be truly terrifying. I think it's a really cool period of warfare for both kind of land and, and naval and just, you know, the developments in artillery and things like that. But, oh boy, was it incredibly brutal. I mean, not that, you know, all war is brutal, but... I think in particular kind of this period of fighting... It's particularly grim. Light, light troops just to harass away at the enemy forces. Uh, also, feel free to let me know if you think the um, audio levels need adjusting or anything like that. I think the perhaps the sound effects are a bit too loud at times, especially when you zoom in. I'll have a, I'll have a go in the next couple of episodes, kind of just rebalancing. I'll also check them during editing and things like that, but feel free to weigh in. Let me know. Uh, also, because I'm bound to be asked what are my graphic settings. I mean, obviously, it's a pretty old game now. What's it like? 2011 this came out so i'm running everything on absolutely maximum although anti-aliasing actually i could crank that up to eight times I, i've got it left on two times right now um i don't know if i need to crank it up any further to be honest we're running it at 1920 by 1080 just because if i run it at 1440 which is the native resolution of my monitor it would make the ui even even smaller um because there isn't any ui scaling in this and, and no way to do it unless you were to kind of patch it as such and and i you know, that's not, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, we've got all those things enabled. But yeah, everything maximum, ultra unit size and all that. Um, with two times modifier through Darth Mod. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. Which, I mean, increasing the unit sizes um, past kind of the default values is always a bit of a trade-off. Because, yes, you get bigger, epic-looking, epica epica uh, more epic looking battles but the ai pathfinding and logic to struggle for it but kind of yeah it's a sacrifice i'm willing to i'm willing to make right artillery limber on up i think to be honest i can tell the rest of you guys to stop firing as well 
you guys could probably get another shot off, but charge him with the cavalry. Take him out. This was a much better battle. I mean, I think the problem with that first battle with Napoleon himself was the, like, positioning wasn't ideal. Uh, our initial deployment, we didn't have a position to go to. And even advancing forward, to be honest, didn't ha really have much that we could go towards, which is a shame. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Actually, no, the Napoleon wasn't 2011. It was 2010. Was 2011 Shogun 2? I think it was, because then, what, 20, 2012 would have been Fall of the Samurai, and then 2013 was Rome 2. The right victory. Boom. Yeah, 2010, my bad. Uh, they lost 1,854. We lost 205. That is a stunning victory. Great veterancy gain on the Chasse Cheval, the artillery. Boom. Yes, yeah, so they're still in there, but we should be able to easily finish them off. Yeah, we've not enabled those for this. It was a cool feature, though. I'd love, I'd love. I think we got dropping battles for Shogun 2, maybe Fall of the Samurai as well. Did they stop after that? I don't think Rome 2 had them. Dropping battles where essentially yeah, people could drop into your campaign, your single player experience, and play as the AI against you. To pretend, I mean, which would potentially screw up your, your campaign, right? But, um... Interesting, interesting. I'd like that as an option for sure. That'd be kind of cool. I think that'd be definitely that'd be fun for something if I'm like streaming a series or something like that. Um, because I'm sure you guys would quite happily jump in and you know have the opportunity to potentially interrupt, harass, or disrupt my campaign and screw me over. <laughs> uh, capture Turin. Yeah, here we go. Mission is sub to get a kingdom. There we go. That's what we need to focus on. So yeah, we need to take this and then march straight on it. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if this army can do it on its own. And Napoleon... I mean, Napoleon could actually make it to Turin, but I can't see what's there, and I'm very hesitant to just throw him straight into the mix. Uh, and risk it. I mean, I could send the Dra Dragoons up so I could see what's coming. Send those troops in. Or do we just want to combine everything into one big army, potentially? Because then if we get jumped on by an enemy force, at least we can kind of counter. I keep sending reinforcements on up. Um, how are we doing? Yeah, it's obviously dropping. I don't want to go for that just yet. The construction what I think what I think we probably need to do is go for more fusiliers of the line. Yeah, get two more of them. Um, how does that look? Oh, we can we can demand the surrender actually. Let's try that. Yes, nice peacefully occupy okay and we can see they've got a small force there can you still move on yeah you can you're not you don't lose all your movement i actually kind of like i prefer this to be honest than the system we have in more recent total wars where you lose all movement uh remaining that your army may have had after you conquer a settlement um i actually prefer this system yeah so we are starting starting to replenish i am a little bit we're wary of moving on out um <laughs> I could scout with the Dragoons. I know they've got that there. I can't see what's there yet. And I guess we move here. We can always reinforce Napoleon's force with these guys if we need to. We should potentially push on that army. Can I then reinforce him with all these? I can reinforce him with some of them, to be fair. If he found himself in a bit of a bind. I think I've got to be aggressive. And we can definitely knock you out with well, your line infantry and militia. Uh, two units of cavalry. I'd probably just go in with two units of cavalry to harass and knock them down that way. But I've only got the one. Oui, monsieur. Let's march on with Napoleon here. Okay. I mean, if we siege Turin, they're going to sally out against me. Um, and I don't think Napoleon's got enough forces to deal with that because... We, I mean, even if it's all just militia, they will eventually just, they'll overrun our position. They were getting close to it in that last battle, but we just managed to do it. They've got one unit of artillery and they've got a unit of militia. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I don't trust the, I, I can't quite remember with Napoleon's order resolves. Do we trust it or not? Um, I don't know how good it is, but I'm not going to risk this. I'm going to fight it. 
also probably will try and get into a habit of just throwing in quick saves before battles at times just because I know there is sometimes possibility of some some crashing occurring uh at least in kind of Darth mod campaigns it seems to for all the wonderful features and improvements it adds does sometimes become uh become a bit unstable had that in previous series um yeah we'll just blast them from afar try and neutralize that artillery right from the start although we're down in a dip down in a ditch to start with. So actually we'll pull back and fire from up here. Slightly better. Yeah, we're slightly downhill on that side, but that's fine. Um, yeah, then we'll have you guys just draw them up there. And I'm going to have you two down here hidden ready to kind of push up and surprise the enemy if we need to uh, along with cavalry which I'm going to rush on down that way Napoleon close to the artillery but not too close yeah, they're behind a hill so it's going to be tough for me to hit them should be pretty tough for them to hit me as well We're fairly well protected too. So where is he? There he is. Bonaparte. Before he dons his famed uh, grey coat. It's honestly delightful back, being back playing this game. I have missed this this warfare so much. I just, one thing I'd love them to like, if I could just add one thing, would be being able to press K and remove all the UI that you get in. I think Rome two onwards, maybe slightly later than that, but that was a nice solid improvement. Just because there isn't any way to do it, I think you can turn off all the UI elements in the settings, but there's no quick shortcut to do it, which isn't that easy to then do. Uh, I'm going to have the artillery now fire on the infantry because we're just getting my dragoons ready from behind. Fire. What I probably would do actually is tell everyone to stop firing, wait till they get closer and then absolutely shred them with canister shot. But we'll blast them from afar while they advance. They may well break before they ever, ever even reach my line. Yeah, all their shots are hitting here. Good. Just need them to clear these guys a little bit more. Yeah, we're just able to break them with uh, cannon shot as they come across here. The trajectory just dips enough to strike them. But the kind of flyover of the shot will go into these. I'm a little bit wary of sending my cavalry in just yet, considering they're not doing any damage to me. Let's see where the wide shot... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's still going loose over there. We don't want my cavalry being struck by a, a rogue shot. But what I'm going to do is... Set them to canister now. Tell them to stop firing. Set them to fire at will again on canister. And in this lull, I'm going to charge on in. Can you capture artillery in this game? How do you go about doing that if that is a thing you can do? In goes the cavalry. Glorious Dragoons. Yeah, they're turning around for my cab now. They're like, oh no, our cannons! <laughs> I need them wiped out. And then we'll pull this group back towards our line, back towards our cannon. Yeah, they're gone. All right, fast forward. 
Ooh, that is very dangerous. That line there. Nearly got him. That's it. Pull them towards the cannons. The cannons will absolutely annihilate them. Here we go. Nothing quite like the smell of canister shot in the morning. Not that we need to rally them, but let's do it anyway. Oh, can they actually hit my artillery? Oh, they can. Fair. I don't want to lose artillery here. Here we go, though. Shred them good, boys. That's it. They're broken. Oh, continue. They've rallied, but they're still continuing. Yeah, lock you guys back up. Send in the Dragoons. You'll have them. Beautiful. Oh, that's a cavalry charge. Smushed. Munch, 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 munch. The Dragoons need their lunch. Awkward pathfinding. Do-da, do-da. I guess something we could do. Let's try and rush them over here. They're going to go that way. Dismount. And then they become a ranged unit. No, they've gone. I always love that. It's, again, something I want to see in New Total Wars for sure. Being able to dismount your cavalry, even if they don't have like a missile weapon or, or whatever, just dismounting them to be, you know, if it was medieval, to have heavily armored infantry because you know they, they typically if you say you've got cavalry in a siege scenario uh at some point you're probably going to want them dismounted to you know start start breaching walls and or climbing up ladders and things like that uh, i mean maybe you'd ride into a breach potentially but then you're going to end up dismounting aren't you we lost 14 that's a napoleonic victory right i now cannot return to replenish and i cannot move forward so I'm going to reinforce you with whatever I can throw. So that you are not out in the open. I am going to give you a, an additional artillery for now. Yes. Um, You guys I'm not going to worry about. Darling of the gutter press. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about... Um, these two here because we could probably chase them down with the chasseurs next turn. Oh, that one. I did think we had another unit. Yeah. Send all your forces there. Just in case big nasty army shows up. I don't know if it will, but I don't want to be surprised. If they want to come attack me, they can do it. Um, yeah, we're looking okay. We haven't got enough gold for another unit, do we? No, but there's two more. Fused is the line. That is fine. Oh, and it was we had to build a supply post, didn't we? That will give us a unit of grenadiers and experience for all land units, yeah. Nice. Right. Let's end the turn. Aha, so they're pulling more troops. Here. Ooh, if you stay outside, though, I can attack and draw you all out. Yeah, you've gone in there to harass that. Thought you probably would. Two-week period. Thank you. I actually think that's probably a good... Um, that's a good number of kind of like 
I think that's probably the most accurate. I guess Napoleon's campaigns, though, in the Grand Campaign, it's probably one of the shortest periods in terms of years, but I think that works really well for this period. Uh, obviously, you're not going to go through generations of characters or anything like that, but still. Could send the chasseurs up, but I think I'm going to have to send them after these guys here. Um, go there. Go there. In you go. Uh, find a human for dropping battles yet. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking I could just encircle that. Um, okay, we'll fight one more quick battle. Let's throw in... Oh, does, does quick save work? Yep. Cool. Yeah, let's throw in a quick save. Go in and fight this one. Shoot him from the flanks. Do a charge. Hopefully, minimal casualties. I mean, I might just charge them and then pull back and shoot them. Because with enough momentum, should have... I'm guessing the other unit is probably hidden in the forest here. Van Hart blindly cha charging cavalry into an enemy. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. He also ended up on top of one another a little bit. So you did kind of shoot through each other a bit. Ooh, they're forming square. Okay. Pull back. Oh, my general's dead. Lionheart, the cavalry butcher. Returns. I honestly thought we'd do much better than that. Both of my cavalry units are wavering. Break the militia first is going to be key. If we can. Let's get a flanking maneuver in. But we cannot go while well, they've got that square there. Go. If they're smart, they'll pull back towards that square because then I cannot touch them. Oh, that's a good volley or two, though. Are they coming back out of the square? Yes. You fools. That's fine. Charge them. Break them. Then rinse and repeat. We have weathered the storm. Oh, they form square again. Smart. Clever AI. Get out of there. We're going to take some pretty hefty casualties to our cav. But this means we weren't just weren't pulling back infantry that we could otherwise send up to Napoleon himself. Needs must. I don't know what their range is like. Okay, the militia's back. Taking out half their strength. It's not enough. More must fall. Uh, nothing I can do with you guys staying in square like that. Apart from moving forward to shoot you. Which looks like you're redeploying and you'll move out square. Happy days. Charge them before they decide to go square again. Made it into the militia. They're standing and firing. Are they in square? Are they not in square? I don't really know what they're doing. No, they're not in square. That should be enough for us to overwhelm and break them. Yeah, there we go. Broken. Beautiful. I think we can just end it because they're in a they're in an outpost, right? We did lose a hundred. Got some good veterancy, mate. Yeah, they are gone. 
I can send these out. So yeah, Napoleon can attack that chap and probably draw them all out, which is going to be quite a big battle. We're not at full strength. Some ca more cavalry would be nice, but we do have three units of cannon. They've got one. There's a 12 pounder. If we don't go right now, they're probably just going to get more troops. Uh, more fuselers of the line. I mean, if it goes bad again, we retreat, we rebuild, and we go from there. We'll go in here for now. What we're going to do is build a supply post. Thank you for the grenadiers. Move you guys in here. Send you guys up. That's all we can do. We can't recruit anything else now. Uh, what can I send to Napoleon? Those two. In we go. How does that look? 3,596 versus... Oh, wow. Far less than I thought. So the, small, the initial force we're facing is a unit of artillery and line infantry. And then their reinforcements coming in. Shoots of Dragoons. 12-pounder artillery. We've only got 6-pounder artillery. But that, that's fine. A unit of Grenadiers. Line infantry. And militia. Oh, that is that is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, massively outnumber them. Good. I mean, OK. Massively outnumber them. The fact that we've got some National Guard in there and revolutionary infantry, which isn't amazing, but... Their line infantry is better, but my national, my revolutionary infantry is better than their militia. And we have, yeah, more than that. That is fine. How much fuel is the line have we got? Uh, only, still only the one. We haven't got any more up yet. They're just behind, but we do have three units of artillery, so we should be able to shred them before they get close to us. We will open fighting this battle and then looking to um, subjugate um, Turin next episode. Until then, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, all that goodness. Until the next one, take care and ciao for now.